gene therapy. Roy's morning glory helps herd health. He has to shoot more than a dozen to keep the larder full and the fallow in good condition. And learn to catch trout. We occasionally stray into angling and here's one about a fishing course at the wonderful Arundel Arms. We have Aaron with the news and we have Hunting YouTube. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. yourselves up but by one of the trees so you're tucked into a tree here or here and I know where you are and it's just being you know, a deer manager means different things to different people there are half a dozen wild species in the UK for starters then there's location environment wild farmed and of course park deer which is what we're looking at today with Roy what a glorious morning for it the temperatures down to about 11 degrees it's absolutely stunning so uh, you felt it a few days ago, you just felt the winds change a little bit and the lights just started to change. It's just absolutely glorious. We've lost that perishing heat that we had um, and uh, yeah, we've, we've been blessed with a, a stunning morning. So we've got to do quite a heavy cull in here at the prickets because we're replacing a lot of the bloodstock in here um, because the, the, um, the, the deer that have been in this particular park haven't had a, a fresh injection of blood for some time. So uh, they are coming out with banjos. Um, so it's... Uh, <laughs> they are um, a little bit um, genetically close. Roy has been brought in to breathe some new life into this fallow herd so that it makes money instead of costing. Yeah, I'm just coming up round behind them, so I'll push them back over to you in a second, Dom. Over the years, it has stagnated. There's been no new blood for decades. This means poor body weight, an increased risk of disease, and a lowering of the herd's overall health. If you look at the quality of that head, you can see he's an incredibly poor example of a cricket. So there's no length to him at all. It's quite a small body as well, so um, body weight on these is not great. He'll be, he'll be definitely a few kilos light of where he should be. Just as if Roy were a wolf, the herd knows that the man in the hat with the shiny new Argo cat is a threat and they hunch up. The, the two shots we took there, were about 170 yards, but I've got complete faith in the kit. You know, the Tika rifles and the Seiko rifles that I use all shoot incredibly well. We're using factory ammunition today, but I know that out to those ranges, I know what the drop-off is, and I know exactly where they're shooting. When you look at parks, you know, you've got to realise it wasn't just a, a hunting park, but they were a, a larder um, for the big estates as well. So from then on, they've been kept as, um, reserves for many different species and also I mean the, the conservation benefits of, of parks can't be, un, can't be understated as well because a lot of the parks have been responsible for breeding Fair Davids and other critically endangered deer species so um, but again you just can't beat them they are just beautiful places to be absolutely glorious and when you can see a morning like this with the mist coming through it is lovely again that's a very very poor head on that one a large part of the herd They've just gone through, hopefully into another position where somebody else can take a couple of shots, but we don't want to push them too hard. We don't want to get them upset, so we'll just let them move around, go from spot to spot, um, and then in the likely locations where they are, we've got somebody tucked up, and then hopefully we can just pick off, and then we've got a, a few different groups of deer moving around. There are just two bucks he feels are worth keeping in here, and one of the reasons he recently completed a darting course with Mike Allison was to be able to coordinate the darting and carriage of some big brawny bucks into here to improve the genetics. Very often you'll find this is exactly what will happen. 
when you're going round. The big boys are obviously older bucks and they've seen it all before and they know there's certain little areas where they can tuck up and stay out of all the bother. And you can just see him there, he's one of the, the nicer bucks. Um, but he's just tucked himself up in the shadows there. Very, very difficult to spot him, he just blends in beautifully. Now, the last time we filmed deer park management, we upset people with a graphic headshot. Not today, but it's interesting to see how there are cultural divisions over shooting methods. Everything in here today will be headshot, and then it's a lot easier for us to deal with when we get back to the larder to get everything dressed and uh, ready to send off to the game dealer. There is absolutely nothing wrong with body shots, but obviously when you're in a park situation, it does afford you that backup that if something does go catastrophically wrong um, and a, a something does happen, then you've got a lot more opportunity to rectify that mistake and get back on top of the animal. But yeah, it's definitely frowned upon by a lot of our, our European neighbours to head shoot, which is quite interesting because a lot of them will quite happily take headshots on running boar and things like that and shoot running targets, which historically for us has been questionable so you know again it is just I think it's just different um, different ways of dealing with management from the traditional perspective of, a, uh, of English stalking we wouldn't shoot animals on the run although if you go back before we heavily got involved with the rifles then a lot of deer were shot on the run with shotguns I think it is just cultural differences um, but yeah, we can't, you know, I don't think um, we're in any, any position to, uh, to criticise what they do and, uh, and vice versa, um, as long as it's carried out ethically and, and as long as it's carried out um, by people who are competent and they've proven that they can do what's required, then I can't see a problem with, uh, with doing any of that. At the end of the morning, we have 15 animals heading for the game dealer. It's a lot of work and a huge responsibility requiring good teamwork and strict working practices. The goal is to make this fallow herd stronger, healthier and a viable proposition for the owners. Thank you, Roy, professional as always. Now, as our Olympic newsreader David is off to Sweden this week, he's been replaced by an amateur. It's Aaron on the Field Sports Channel, Muse Stump. This is the Field Sports Channel News. Time is nearly up for Scotland's consultation on wild mammals. You have until the 15th of September 2019 to fill in the consultation into protecting wild animals. Organised by the Scottish Green MSP Alison Johnson, there is a link below. Another deadline looming. The deadline to have your say on the UK's consultation on firearms licensing guidelines is the 17th of September. Links below. Thanks to Bob Kahn for this reminder. A Field Sports Channel viewer has stalked and shot this unusual roebuck. Noah Thompson took this Perroque deer near Saffron Walden in Essex. Six puppies are back with their owner after being stolen. A campaign on social media saw the return of a litter of six Springer Spaniel puppies to the dog owner in Dawlish Devon. One three-month-old puppy has still yet to be returned, and the owners are still looking for her. If you can help them, please get in touch. The Badger Cull in Derbyshire is not going to take place this year. After what looks like pressure from the British Prime Minister's girlfriend, Carrie Simmons here speaking at the bird fair, the cull is to go ahead across much of the rest of England. Derbyshire farmers who have been prepared for the cull, with around £800,000 spent on equipment, are planning to appeal. Meanwhile, antis are stepping up their attacks on the cull, with posts like this. And a group in Somerset posted this footage of a masked activist releasing a badger from a cage trap. Vehicles belonging to antis have been spotted in the East Essex Hunt country. Local hunt supporters believe that they were planting trail cams. Coincidentally, on the same night, two straw stacks in the area burst into flames. Two new books and a hunting magazine are out or being announced this week. Monkjack stalker Peter Meek's book is called Reeves Monkjack Devil Deer. Lucas Mikolev, who appears in our films about hunting Malta, has produced a new biannual magazine, Hunt Magazine. And Rachel Carey's cookbook, Game and Gatherings, will be out on the 4th of November. Links to all of them are in the description below. A British MP backs Basque's bird box programme. 
Ludlow MP Philip Doon met Jack Abrahams of the British Association for Shooting Conservation at Walcott Hall in his constituency to find out about the role shooting plays in conservation. A London photographer has captured an unusual stag party in Acton. A herd of fallow deer moved into the housing estate in London's suburb of Romford in Essex in order to find grazing. A militant British vegan says a farmer shot at her. The woman who calls herself Mythical Mia was on a nighttime raid on a Spanish rabbit farm when she says she was chased off the property by a farmer shooting at her. Police in Barcelona have concluded that there is no evidence that the farmer shot at her and her actions resulted in the death of around 100 rabbits. Tempers are flaring in Sweden where antis are becoming increasingly violent. This film shows confrontation between antis and a shooting party, unlike the UK where the system of gun licenses rather than hunting licenses leads to higher standard of behaviour with guns. The hunters do not put away their shotguns. A moose has wandered into an American football training session at the Memorial Stadium in North Dakota. After clearing the stadium of members of the Fighting Hawks football team and locking the gates, North Dakota Game and Fish Department rangers tranquilized the moose and released it into the countryside. In a twist to the story, their boss now says that they should have shot it. Antis in the US are attacking Donald Trump for allowing the import of a black rhino trophy. A Missouri man shot the black rhino in Namibia, where half of the 5,500 black rhinos in the wild are found. Thanks to hunting, Namibia more than doubled its black rhino population between 2001 and 2012. The US Department of Justice has grabbed the personal details of 10,000 users of a gun app. The Department of Justice did not contact the rifle scope manufacturer ATN before filing a court order on Thursday demanding Apple and Google turn over the user data from ATN's mobile app. ATN reacted angrily to the news saying it will not provide the information about the identity of its customers to any third party unless specifically required by law. A Zimbabwean academic has torn into anti-hunters in a US government inquiry. Patience Gandiwa told anti-hunters in the US government to stop lecturing her government on how to look after wildlife. Meanwhile, vegan racing driver Lewis Hamilton showed his support for animal rights by condemning hunting sports. And The Daily Show, an important comedy Sorry, program in the US, slammed into hunting tourism in this week's show. Thanks to Nigel Gortry for the link. A vegan is taking their neighbours to Supreme Court to stop them cooking on barbecues. Scylla Cardam from Perth, pictured here, says she's fed up with the smell of meat cooking on the barbecues next door. She also wants to stop her neighbours from smoking and bouncing balls. UK TV presenter Adam Henson has called for the government to introduce GCSEs, exams for 15-year-olds, in agriculture to stop the rise in vegan fragilantism. And finally, an alligator hunter in the US state of Georgia has landed a new record. Derek Snelson landed the 700 pound alligator on Lake Eufella. It took him and four others more than five hours to land the 14 foot reptile. He says he's gonna get it stuffed. You are now up to date with the Field Sports Channel News, brought to you by you, the Field Sports Nation. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, Aaron. And if you want to see more news, pop over to our website. We've got more news on the front page there. Fastest way is F Channel. Next up, autumn trout. And I have been stepping back in time. So I came here 40 years ago to go on the Arundel Arms Fly Fishing Beginners course and I'm back because my son's doing the same course. Well I just assumed it'd be they just give us a small presentation and we spend the whole day fishing and then that's pretty much it but I didn't, there was a lot more to it actually which I thought was really good. There are two instructors on the course. One of them taught me, David Pilkington, legendary river keeper at the Arundel Arms in Devon. It's got to be hundreds if not into the thousands. We've had a lot of people, yes. And we're, and we're still doing so now, which is nice. So we're getting more and more ladies fishing now, and a lot of them fish very well, and some of them are very keen, which is, which is great. Um, you know, there are no barriers in fishing at all. 
and we still get parents coming with children. Um, and thank goodness there is still enough in the younger generation who want to fish, because that's, that's dwindling everywhere, I think. If we still get a huge range, I mean, we will get whole families come together, and we still get folks who've, who've worked hard for a business career and paid off the schools and the mortgages and eventually retired at the age of 60-odd thinking, I must go fishing, and they're too bloody old and knackered to do it. You know, that's a, that's a sad fact of life. They should have done it. One of the memories I have, we had two old boys came in one of our courses. They were brothers. They'd farmed in Dorset. They'd both hunted and shot all their lives, but neither of them had ever fished. And they came on one of our courses. I think one was 72 and one was 74. And they both took to it like ducks to water. And one of them said, oh, bugger, I wish I'd done this 60 years ago. I enjoyed all of it. I mean, there was, a, there was those periods where you could stand there for a long time because you couldn't catch any fish, but that's sort of part of it. And so other than that, I really enjoyed everything about it. The, all the different lessons we had, whether it was a presentation about fishing in general, or it was about knots or casting. Certainly a minimum of inside time, because standing pointing at something on a chart isn't like being on the river and seeing it. So we tried to have the maximum practical time outdoors. But some theory is always useful. And we always give everybody at the end of the course one of our little beginner's guides, which is very, very elementary stuff, but it does nonetheless give you the bones of what we've been trying to teach you. And it's, it's a starting point, certainly. They must be doing something right. Since the course began in the 1970s, it's only had five instructors. The newest addition is Alex Jones. Uh, now I've worked here full-time four seasons. Um, and before that, I did a couple of years part-time when I was at university, helping with sea trout guiding and basically fishing as much as I possibly could. It's just myself and David from sort of riverbank maintenance and chopping the trees and to through to the ecology lessons, courses, all of the online enterprise, photography, magazine articles, etc. So it, it all falls down to us, basically. If it contains the word fish, it's us. I mean, David, I think, has now taught three generations of certain families and most of our business comes from word of mouth and it's people who came 20, 30 years ago. Still delighted to see it's here and then send the next generation or recommend it to their friends. You fish on the hotel lake and then they take you to one of the many rivers where the Arundel Arms has the fishing. Fishing on the river, it was, it was a lot harder. Or when you caught one, it was definitely like uh, you just caught a wild fish that wasn't put there just for the purpose of fishing. So yes, it was, it was more exciting. Um, I mean, it might just be they came for a fly fishing experience. Some people will want to go on to be able to fish trout streams, others will want to go off and fish all over the world and have just be competent casters. They, they've got all of the basic techniques and skills and understand the sort of the practice behind it. That's, that's the hope. And occasionally they catch fish. Occasionally, if they do as they're told. <laughs> A few of us caught fish. Uh, some were really big, some were just not that big, but still pretty good. Well, I caught two, and the first one I did, which I haven't caught a fish, in, well, the last time I caught a fish was about that big. <laughs> uh, it was, it was, um, it was very exciting because I haven't done it in a long time. And uh, well, when I caught, when I got it out, it wasn't too hard. Once I got it on the hook, Edmund is starting out on his fishing career, and I have to give you a little bit of a plug for the rod and reel setup he's using. It's a pesky fun sword four-piece rod and reel and it's from China, but it's good for under 80 pounds. And if you want to buy it, go to piskyfun.com or pop down to the description below and you will find links there where we earn a little bit of a kickback. Now, I had to ask David if he's thinking of hanging up his rods. Well, God hasn't decided <laughs> anything for me at the moment. And I think as long as I can still walk up and down the banks and, and, and talk sense, I'll try and continue to keep doing so. Wonderful David Pilkington ending our piece there. And you can find out more about the Fly Fishing Beginners course at the Arundel Arms on its website, arundelarms.com. Now from the river's lead, Thrushel, Wolf and Tamar, to the wider world of hunting and shooting, and perhaps fishing, on YouTube it is Hunting YouTube.
This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Lots of introspection from the world of hunting and shooting this week. Top UK YouTuber The Gun Shop looks at what it calls the grouse shooting problem and answers the anti's charges that it is bad for the environment, just for the rich, and that gamekeepers actually have forked tails. Here's one from Dallas Safari Club. The response shows South African professional hunter Paul Stone making the point that anti-hunters and the hunting community share a common passion, their love of wildlife, and it's only the blinkered anties who don't get that. Meanwhile in Australia, Blair Findlay and Simon Webster from Dixie Decoys discuss the fight to hold on to the Victorian waterfowling tradition in a film called Dixie Down Under, the final chapter, Our Fight. Now on to the practicalities of hunting and shooting. Custom Rifle Hunters is using a triple two to shoot rabbits, plus he gets a couple of foxes in this short film. In a film from a previous season, just out, Jonathan McGee is at the Del Nabo estate in Scotland's Cairn Gorms, where a team of guns is enjoying pheasant shooting. To Turkey, which is producing the most watched wild boar films of the moment, OK Sahin has made a couple of films about hunting wild boar in and out of the marshes with dogs. And in Sweden, our pals at Yacht or Yacht are on a moose hunt. They are in the centre of the country for the first moose hunt of the year, which is what David Tim Pilbeam and Jason Doyle are doing this week in Sweden. Right, finally, OK, thank you overseas viewers, I know we Brits can be slow to catch up, but much talk recently about the Remington 700 Precision Chassis Rifle, or PCR, now available from the UK distributor Raytrade. Here's John Bailey from Bailey's Shooting and Country Wear discussing it and trying it out. That's it for this week. I've put all these films into a playlist for you. Click on the I symbol top right or check this film's description. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, that is it for this week. If you haven't done so, please pop over to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv, or the fast way is F Channel. You can click to like us there on Facebook and on Instagram. You can follow us on Twitter. You can subscribe to us on YouTube. You can by going to F Channel slash Fieldsports Nation, become a shareholder or a YouTube member or a Patreon follower. It all amounts to the same thing. And we are back next week. I'll see you then. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing, and goodbye.